Hi, this is Yohav Sapin Bharti, and today we have with us once again Hilary Carter, SVP of Research at the Linux Foundation. Hilary, it's great to have you on the show again. Thank you, Swap. Great to be here. And today we are going to talk about United Nations Ospos for Good Symposium in New York City, which was conducted or hosted a couple of weeks ago. Talk a bit about what was that event all about? This event um, was it's called Ospos for Good, and it was hosted at the United Nations headquarters in New York. It was the second year that there was such an event uh, by the same name. Last year in 2023 was the first time uh, the open source community convened at the United Nations for uh, a fairly informal one day event. And there was a delegation from the Linux Foundation in, in 2023. And this year, the United Nations wanted to become much more um actively involved, expand the event to bring in uh, leaders from across um, the UN ecosystem from all around the world uh, to be present for this conversation and make it a two-day event, invite as many representatives from the open source community as possible, and really bring together um, the two worlds of the United Nations ecosystem, uh, the leaders of, of uh leaders and decision makers in terms of policy and um, government institutions as a means to accelerate open source adoption and maybe hope to uh, make open source uh, part of government policy to use open source first and ensure that public money is going toward using public code. So those were the origins and we were really excited to be a part of, um, of the 2024 event at the Linux Foundation was invited to be part of the communications committee, and I was the primary liaison on that uh, committee. Uh, a number of us were also invited to be speakers, so I had that opportunity as well. And can you also talk about why is UN interested in OSPOs or open source? What does it mean for UN? Now, I don't speak for the UN, but this is the, the trend that I see. Um, I, I see a much more widespread understanding among public leaders as to the, the value for sustainable innovation that open source, open source creates, that there is a greater understanding that open source software, open hardware, open standards, and open data provide the world with sustainable development opportunities, sustainable tools, um, open communities, trusted technologies, creating opportunities for more secure technologies. And that's why I see a greater interest by the United Nations in becoming more actively involved, taking on a formal role in hosting an event, inviting the world's open source leaders to contribute their ideas and uh, their knowledge as to how we can accelerate the goals uh, that the United Nations identified the 17 um, sustainable development goals and how open source as a, as critical digital public infrastructure uh, is essential to our ability to even try to meet those goals. The 2030 agenda is fast approaching and we need to pull out every tool in the box and open source is very much a part of that. Uh, equation. Our our world is hurtling towards 2030. Uh, we recorded the highest uh, temperature on record in 2024, and time's running out. So it's great to see world leaders through um, a, a, a supranational organization like the UN taking um, a leadership role in articulating the open source value proposition. So I'm very, very excited about that. And the more people understand the opportunity, the more that governments understand that open source is an incredible resource for innovation, for building climate resilience, then we have a chance to uh, accelerate progress to meet those goals, um, potentially uh, on a, a, an accelerated schedule. Of course, open source, it plays a specific role, but if you look at some of the challenges that you mentioned, of course, climate crisis is one. There are a lot of Linux Foundation projects. A good project is LF Energy, agro based. Can you also talk about what kind of foundations within Linux Foundation are there 
which are kind of created to help industries, governments, or you know other stakeholders to address some of these challenges. We were able to identify uh, those specific project communities at the Linux Foundation that were really created to solve uh, climate specific challenges, namely LF Energy. I think that project more than any um, was really created to address climate action and to uh, advance the digitalization of the energy sector uh, to make electricity uh, production, distribution, and coordination much more effective through open source technologies, that we would have a better chance at realizing uh, the clean energy revolution and uh, clean en energy implementations if we together as a society collaborated on the technologies that are essential to realizing that goal. Um, so LF Energy is a great example of uh, a project that, that really has climate action at its core. And uh, others like um, Agstack Foundation looking at uh, the agriculture sector and how to, how to make smallhold farmers uh, more productive and um, increase crop yields, use technologies in smarter ways that help uh, uh, realize some um, some important goals specific to um, feeding people, as uh, you know, zero hunger is I think the second goal in the seventeen sustainable development goals. Zero poverty is the first. Um, no poverty, and then zero hunger uh, coming very um, soon after that goal in, in terms of it um, listing the urgent ones first. Um, other projects at the Linux Foundation, like the Hyperledger. Foundation community projects, they were established for other purposes to uh, improve the way that that digital assets are shared and issued and exchanged and stored, um, whether those assets are related to data or currency or some other type of credential. And the it's the in the application of many hyperledger projects did we discover that, a lot of our code bases are used in a sustainability context. So that was also really exciting. There's also the Green Software Foundation uh, choosing um, software that uh, reduces the uh, carbon footprint. Um, so those are, I think, the big ones. Uh, another project which has recently merged under Finos, the FinTech Open Source Foundation, is OS Climate. And we announced this merger in June at Open Source and Finance Forum in London. And I was present for this announcement. And it's really wonderful because OS Climate uh, was a sustainability focused open source uh, project community, building out tools uh, related to um, identification of, of climate risk, uh, of, of transition, uh, transition risk, um, and um, physical risk, where uh, an organization has some kind of risk, either a transition risk or, or physical risk, um, from a kind of climate threat. Is the company in a hurricane path? Is the company in a potential floodplain? Are they near a fault line? Um, are they subject to uh, forest fires that can, that can create damage? And by merging the tooling and analytics and frameworks of OS Climate with the FinTech Open Source Foundation community, the um, banks and the asset managers and the FinTechs, um, that opened the door to huge pools of talented contributors who have a vested interest in uh, market resilience by way of climate resilience and bringing in all of that talent from those organizations to contribute in the OS climate tools and analytics software so that all parties could make a responsible ESG investment and help supercharge climate finance into some of these projects was a very exciting development. And that was part of what we were um, uh, delighted to convene uh, and discuss in New York was this amazing opportunity between OS Climate and uh, and Finos, now a merged uh, Linux Foundation project. When I look at all these global challenges that we are facing, and also if you look at some of the major 
technological innovations that are happening. Linux Foundation is playing a very critical role. Linux kernel is the backbone of modern you know, infrastructure. It doesn't matter whether you're Apple, Microsoft, I mean, everybody, the cloud runs on Linux. And then we look at Kubernetes. What distinctive edge do you see Linux Foundation has because of these projects that even when we look at these global challenges, we are not looking at uh, a small organization focused on uh, a small niche open source within the tech industry. We are looking at a much bigger picture. So can you talk about the much bigger role? You folks don't want to talk about it, but Linux Foundation is playing in bringing these major changes in our world. Wow, that's an excellent uh, uh, question swap. And I think the, the, the value that the Linux Foundation provides in terms of building a, a community around climate resilience and sustainability is by way of the scale of open source projects that have grown under uh, the Linux Foundation and through our engagement with community, our ability to bring in new developers and really help projects grow, proliferate, um, and and hyperscale. And the Linux uh, kernel project is, is our um, most notable example, uh, Kubernetes being another one. And I think by way of demonstrating the success of of existing open source projects used in other contexts, contexts, we have an opportunity to create that kind of trust for lesser known open source projects to be used in a critical context. And so that's our contribution. We've proven the methodology. We have demonstrated that through community, through openness, we have this opportunity to create trusted, widely used technologies. And we're encouraging more actors, more parties, more decision makers, more organizations, governments to get involved and be part of this um, uh, once in a generation opportunity to, to build out sustainable uh, infrastructure. The unfortunate thing is we don't have a generation to realize this. We have to do it now. So we hope that um, trust and goodwill and reputation um, are achieved by way of openness, by way of the number of organizations who are part of the Linux Foundation building out our projects, that we've proven the methodology enough that new entrants to open source can say, ah, if others can do it, then we can do it too. If the Linux Foundation believes that climate is important, then we should probably get involved. And we're hoping that that's the message that we can, that we can convey and the lesson that can be learned from past projects that we have been uh, very fortunate to be a part of uh, their their growth journey. And also, can you talk about from outsider's perspective to get all the industry players can be a daunting task, but when you work with Linux Foundation, because you it doesn't matter because the foundation of foundations, X company will be part of some Y foundation within Linux Foundation. So how it makes it easier even for our bodies like you and to tap into the whole industry by just tapping into Linux Foundation. Yeah, uh, we are that gateway to um, hundreds of different organizations. And that is a value proposition uh, for collaborating with us is that doors become open to conversations that might not otherwise be possible outside of an open source, open source community. Um, and that's, that is the main reason and opportunity for organizations to get involved is to have a seat at the table. Participation is open for everyone. You don't have to be a member, but you do have to, um, raise your hand and, and get involved and start contributing. Even if it is in a non-code contribution, even if it's in a non-monetary contribution, first of all, by, by showing up, by, um, getting informed, by reading some of our literature, by attending some of our meetings and our events, can you get to know the, the hundreds of different organizations who are actively contributing code, who are actively funding uh, open source projects? And uh, that is, that is a, a, a really exciting opportunity. And it's one thing that the LF does incredibly well, is be able to convene parties. Uh, we don't have all the parties at the table yet, uh, but we've, we're off to a pretty good start. Uh, we just need more folks to, to come on in and get involved. We had this discussion around sustainability last year also at Vancouver. Uh, can you talk about 
what other activities, what other events are taking place where Linux Foundation is involved in terms of this topic of sustainability? In September, uh, LF Energy is having its conference in Brussels. Uh, and so everybody who uh, is anybody who has a, uh, an interest in open source technologies in the energy sector will hope to uh, be convening uh, with LF Energy in Brussels. Uh, that's the week before we then convene in Vienna for Open Source Summit Europe. We hope to have um, a, a panel discussion in Vienna on uh, OSPOs for Good, the event that was hosted at the UN in July, and uh, help further the uh, bridge building exercise with our, our community participants, letting them know about the work that we're doing, um, the the opportunity to engage further with the United Nations through our events is uh, is critical. Um, you know, there are all, there are numerous um, uh, working groups that take place within project communities. They might not necessarily have a uh, a live event, but let's think about about sustainability in perhaps different terms, not just uh, the electrification of our world and and climate action, but there are other types of 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 goals that we as an organization are upholding and that align with the sustainable development goals, things like diversity, equity, and inclusion, or enabling access to digital infrastructure. Um, DEI working groups are um, are open to anyone, and our project communities like Chaos uh, are a great place to start and get involved. If you're interested in a particular project community, many of our, our project communities have DEI working groups. And one of the challenges that we identified in New York in our conversations is well known, but it was validated there it, as being an ongoing challenge is one of access. It is one of inclusion. And um, we have a responsibility to further uh, make open source communities accessible and inclusive so that they can um, proliferate, that people from the global majority can start to use them and innovate. They need, however, access to infrastructure. They need access to electricity, to equipment, to good Wi-Fi. Um, and so it, it just it, it illustrates how our community really is interconnected, that there's the technology layer, there's the access layer, um, and then there's the diversity of participant layer, the diversity of thought layer. All of that is a holistic approach on how open source really can scale. And uh, when we when we think about open source in the sustainability context and the context of the sustainable development goals, uh, then we have a more robust approach to how we really go about building our communities. There was another aspect that was discussed and there are many um, events taking place around security through the work of the Open Source Security Foundation. And uh, there, uh, that organization has a presence uh, um, at Open Source Summit Europe in Vienna. There's also a conference taking place in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia in October called Sauce Fusion. And I bring this up because the items identified for helping scale open source and addressing the world's greatest challenges uh, include the need for our technologies to be secure. That access only matters if it's secure access. That our participation matters if we're creating secure and trusted software. So we cannot ignore um, the security responsibility within the context of sustainable development. And so back to your original point about what events are taking place, what should we be aware of? I would encourage anyone interested in sustainability to think um, strategically about the role of cybersecurity and the events that are taking place around making more secure open source software and how it is everyone's responsibility to build innovative solutions, sustainable solutions that are secure by design and not secure by review uh, as an afterthought. And that's just one of the way, what you know, the Open Source um, Security Foundations events are just one initiative. Um, LF Research is taking a big role in helping fortify secure software through 
uh, a project that we've just done in, in cooperation with um, uh, LF Education, our training and, and certification group, in creating a framework for, um, uh, for job roles that includes security, regardless of whether security has been in your job title previously or not. If you are a web dev, if you're a systems administrator, if you're, if you're touching IT at any level, you must think about security as it relates to your day-to-day -day responsibilities. So the more people whose job descriptions include security, that's another approach that we can, uh, that we can implement and, and take to ensuring that our sustainable software is also secure software. Since you know you started your answer with also talking about diversity, equity, inclusion, right now if you look at the world or if you look at at least the social media, there's kind of a culture war going on against Vogue or DEI. Also, some companies who were seen as the pioneers or the thought bear of these initiatives, they did some layoff of their DEI teams. Uh, when you look at these things, are you looking at it as a disturbing trend? Or you feel that you no know, companies are doing a lot of things to increase diversity, inclusion, equity, but they may not be doing it under this official label. I just want to understand what is your feeling because you folks invest a lot. Actually, just a disclaimer, your events are also one of the most family friendly events, you know, and that's where I used to bring my kid and I can bring my whole family to Linux Foundation events because you you, you don't have to leave the family behind to attend Linux Foundation events. So you folks take care of So it's kind of part of your culture itself. So how do you see these uh, developments in the, in the larger uh, space? It's an interesting trend swap. And I do think that there is backlash. Um, it's sort of two steps forward, one step back. And it's unfortunate. I think uh, the Linux Foundation truly upholds the values um, that data has proven, I'm going to bring it back to research, that the science shows, the data shows that when we have diverse perspectives, when we bring our full selves and our points of view to work and into our, our developer communities, we get better software, we get better results. And we will stand by that. Uh, we will continue to encourage uh, parents to bring children to our events. We will continue to provide uh, child care at our events, just as we're doing in Vienna at Open Source Summit Europe, uh, we will continue to insist that there is representation um, on panels at our events by women and, and that shows the breadth and diversity of our community as a means to inspire others to get involved. Not because it's the politically right thing to do, but because it is Science shows that it's the best thing to do. Um, and uh, I think we're just going to press on with that truth um, and uphold the values that are so important to us and to our community. And I am certainly a beneficiary of that. And I have a responsibility as a woman in tech to be present and to create opportunities for, for people from underrepresented groups uh, because I think everybody um, has a, a very important perspective to contribute as it relates to the way technologies are created and the way the value proposition of technologies are created, even if it's about uh, localization, uh, language, um, uh, opening doors across all, all levels of our community to increase access is only going to make better tech. And until that data changes, I don't think we're going to change our approach. Hilary, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today, uh, joining me and talk about, you know, this, this recent event, Ospos for Good. Thank you so much for these uh, great insights. And as usual, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Schwab. It's such a topic that's near and dear to my heart. So I really appreciate the opportunity again.